And let's welcome Alex to the stage. Alex Stein. Is that good? Yeah. I am obsessed with the Iditarod, which is an 1,100 mile dog sled race that goes from Anchorage to Nome, Alaska. And I love the Iditarod so much that I made a documentary film about it that won a couple of awards. And for the last five years, I have been the co-host of the world's most popular Iditarod podcast, <laughs> which is not as impressive as it sounds because it's a very small niche. But I have never driven a dog team. And my friend Robert, who co-hosts the podcast with me, said, why don't you come up to Alaska and you can drive some of my dogs? And I said, great, because I'm an idiot. And then he said, I'll give you eight dogs, yearlings, and we can go on this seven-mile loop around the back and it'll be fantastic. And I said, great, again, because again, I'm an idiot. And it started off really, really great. And there is nothing, by the way, that compares to the absolute joy that a slave dog feels when it starts to run. I hope you all get to experience that one day. And it was going really, really great. And after about a half hour, I thought to myself, I can do this. I've gone five miles. It wouldn't be that big a deal to go another 1,044 miles and complete the Iditarod. And then we came to this hill. And it was a very minor hill. It's a hill that doesn't even have a name, except I call it Hubris Hill, because I was starting to get cocky. And we're going down the hill, and I start noticing that the sled is catching up to the last dogs. And I suddenly am worried that the sled is going to hit the dogs, which is very, very bad. And my intention was to just tap on the brake a little bit to slow down the sled. But in the back of my mind, I heard this voice that was saying, you're going to kill these dogs and they cost more than your car. Plus, they're beautiful, and they're athletes, and they're fucking dogs. What's the matter with you, you monster? So I slammed on the brake, and the sled tips over, and I fell in the hard-packed snow at a very weird angle and could not get up for a really long time. And my shoulder was dislocated, and I was in so much pain, and Robert kept saying, get up, get up, and I said, no. I'm going to live here from now on, in the snow and the ice where it's 10 below zero. It took us an hour for me to get up and for us to get the sled and the dogs and Robert and me and the snow machine back to his kennel, which was only like a mile away. And then Robert starts Googling and YouTubing these videos for how to pop a dislocated shoulder back into place. Spoiler alert, no! Don't ever do that! About three hours later, we were at the nearest emergency room, conveniently located 70 miles away. And during all of this time, every single muscle interconnected to my arm is spasming. And I have never imagined anything that is as painful as that. Maybe childbirth, but I'm not positive about this. And finally, they gave me two doses of fentanyl, the drug that killed Prince, four doses of propofol, the drug that killed Michael Jackson. And after I had these rock star death drugs, it took two doctors and three nurses 45 minutes to pop my shoulder back into place because, oh yeah, I also broke the top of my humerus and it was sticking up in such a way that the bones could not be put back properly. I was figuring I'll, it'll be like four to six weeks and then I'll be totally fine, but that didn't happen. And finally, after about four months, I'd only recovered about 25% of my mobility and my strength, and I went to see my orthopedic surgeon, and he said, well, this might be as good as it gets. <laughs> that happens sometimes, because he is a dick. And that was... <laughs> That was the first time in this entire thing that I felt really depressed and I thought, maybe I am never going to get better. But then I spent thousands of dollars on doctor visits and physical therapy and acupuncture and CBD oil and medical marijuana. And when I went to the dispensary, I said, what kind of dosage should I get? And they said, oh, you just have to experiment, which I guess means that all our friends in high school were right. And then, <laughs> and then I was doing fire cupping and cryotherapy where they put you in a container that's 200 degrees below zero for two minutes. And I don't even believe in half of these things. But I started making progress. And when I was growing up, my dad 
had a favorite joke that he would tell me all the time, which is a guy goes to a doctor and says, doctor, I hurt my arm, I can only raise it this high. And the doctor says, how high could you raise it before you hurt it? And he goes, this high. <laughs> and that would be really impressive if I'd hurt my left arm. <laughs> but I didn't, it was my right shoulder. And even though I've made a lot of progress in the past 10 months, I still can only raise it this far. And listen, I do not believe in intentions and that you can manifest change in the world. But in the past 10 months, I'd have to give up all sorts of drama and nonsense and concentrate on healing. And I just want to tell you all right here tonight that it is my intention that I will get completely better 100%. Thank you.